Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Presenting to you the daily quiz for 12th of Jan 2023. But before we begin, here is an important announcement. Baiju's Exam Prep IAS is organizing a scholarship test on the 15th of Jan at 11 a.m. This test will be very similar to your prelims exam. So do take this test. Additional advantage is that you get a chance to win up to 90% scholarship based on your performance in the test. So do take this test to understand your level of preparedness for the exam and also get scholarship as well. Register using the link given in the description box below. Now let us begin and take a look at the first question for today. Article 10 and Article 11 of the Constitution of India deal with number 1 rights of citizenship of a certain person who has migrated to India from Pakistan number 2 continuance of rights of citizenship number 3 parliament to regulate the right of citizenship by law number 4 right to property choose the correct option what is the context according to this article in the Indian Express newspaper today while hearing petitions challenging Section 6A of the Citizenship Amendment Act, a constitution bench of the Supreme Court has said that it would decide whether this provision is constitutionally valid before taking up other issues related to the Citizenship Act. So, the plea before the Supreme Court challenges one of the core elements of the Assam Accord, which determines who is a foreigner in the state of Assam and the basis of the final national register of citizens in Assam. So what exactly is the section 6A? Section 6A of the Citizenship Act establishes March 24th, 1971 as the cut-off date for entry into the state of Assam, meaning that those entering the state of Assam after that would be considered as illegal immigrants. Now, the Supreme Court here will decide whether this Section 6A of the Act is constitutionally valid or not. It is in this context that we have taken up a question on citizenship. But what is citizenship? Citizenship signifies the relationship between individual and the state. The constitution of India does not define the term citizen but the details of various categories of people who are entitled for citizenship are given in part 2 that is article 5 to article 11. If you know this much you will be able to eliminate 4. So here you can also eliminate option D because this is the only option with 4. Now, to answer this question here, you must have revised polity very well. Article 6 of the Indian constitution deals with the citizenship of those who migrated from Pakistan to India. So 1 becomes incorrect. At this stage, you can eliminate option B and option C and arrive at your answer which is option A. See, Article 10 of the Indian Constitution addresses the continuance of citizenship rights. It is about every person who is or is deemed to be an Indian citizen under any of the provisions of Part 2 of Indian Constitution. And Article 11 gives powers to the Parliament of India to regulate the right of citizenship by law. Right? So the right answer would be 2 and 3 which is option A. Here's a task for you for today. Let me know citizenship comes under which list under the constitution? Union list, state list or concurrent list? Let me know in the comment section. Also don't forget to comment how many questions you could get right. Moving on to question number 2. In which of the following wildlife sanctuaries are you most likely to spot Indian skimmer? Option A, Koringa Wildlife Sanctuary. Option B, Nandhaur Wildlife Sanctuary. Option C, Periyar Wildlife Sanctuary. Option D, Ghatigaon Wildlife Sanctuary. What is the context? This article in the Hindu newspaper today has a reference to Indian skimmer and hence this question. See, Indian skimmer is a water bird species. In India, this species can be sighted near Chambal River in central India and also in a few parts of Odisha and in Andhra Pradesh. This species chooses the Kakinada coast in Andhra Pradesh for its winter sojourn for feeding. Also remember that this bird breeds colonially on large exposed sandbars and islands. What does it feed on? It feeds on surface dwelling fishes, small crustaceans and also insect larvae. The IUCN classifies Indian skimmer as vulnerable in its red list. 
According to the Bombay Natural History Society, the Godavari estuary in Andhra Pradesh has become a prime and safe habitat for Indian skimmers. And we must know that Koringa Wildlife Sanctuary is a mangrove forest and an estuary in Andhra Pradesh. So option A here would be the right answer. The Nandhar Wildlife Sanctuary is in Uttarakhand, Periyar in Kerala and Ghatika Wildlife Sanctuary is in Madhya Pradesh. Another important fact you should remember is that Ghatika Wildlife Sanctuary was established specially to protect the great Indian bustard. Moving on to question number 3. Consider the following statements with respect to Beipur Uru. Number 1. It is a handcrafted wooden boat made in Machili Patnam in Andhra Pradesh. Number 2. Khalasis and Odais are engaged in constructing Beipur Uru. Number 3. This traditional craft is protected as a geographical indication. Which of the given statements is or are correct? What is the context? This article in the Hindu newspaper today talks about Baipur boat or the Baipur Uru. And that is why this question. So what exactly is this Baipur Uru? Baipur Uru is a wooden ship or a sailing boat which is handcrafted by skilled artisans and carpenters in Baipur in Kerala. They are purely made from premium wood without using any modern techniques. The wood used here is still sawed the traditional way which requires immense expertise. It takes anywhere between 1 to 4 years to build each Uru and the entire process is done manually. So coming back to our question, say this name Uru is associated with the traditional ship building culture of Kerala. And Beipur Uru is made in Beipur in Kerala. So number 1 would be incorrect. The prominent people that are associated with Uru making are Odais and Khalasis. Odais family name comes from Odam which is a type of small ship. And Khalasis or the Mapilla Khalasis are world famous for their skill and expertise in launching the completed Urus into waters by using only traditional methods. So 2 is also correct. The Khalasis and the Odais are the prominent people that are associated with Beipur Uru making. Coming to statement 3. Kori Code has recently applied for geographical indication tag for the famous Beipur Uru. But it has not been granted the GI tag yet. So 3 would be incorrect. Therefore the right answer to our question here would be option D. 2 only. Moving on to question number 4. Who among the following refer to Swami Vivekananda as the maker of modern India? Option A. Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose. Option B. Mahatma Gandhi. Option C. Ramakrishna Paramahamsa. Option D. Rabindranath Tagore. Why this question? This article in the Indian Express newspaper today talks about the 160th birth anniversary of Swami Vivekananda. The National Youth Day is observed on January 12th to commemorate the birth anniversary of Swami Vivekananda who always inspired the country's youth. And 2023 marks the 160th birth anniversary of Swami Vivekananda and hence this question. From an early age, Swami Vivekananda nurtured an interest in Western philosophy, history and theology and went on to meet the religious leader Ramakrishna Paramahamsa who later became his guru. Swami Vivekananda, who was an ardent disciple of Sri Ramakrishna Paramahamsa, was a major force in the revival of Hinduism in India. He is also credited with enlightening the Western world about Hinduism. And it was none other than Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose who referred to Swami Vivekananda as the maker of modern India. Therefore, the right option here would be option A. See, Swami Vivekananda belonged to the 19th century, yet his message and his life are most relevant even today. To know more about Swami Vivekananda, do watch our biography series. If you haven't watched it already, you can watch it by clicking on the link on the top right corner of your screens right now. Now let us take up a previous year question from prelims paper 2017. The term domestic content requirement is sometimes seen in the news with reference to Option A. Developing solar power production in our country Option B. Granting licenses to foreign TV channels in our country Option C. Exporting our food products to other countries Option D. Permitting foreign educational institutions to set up their campuses in our country. The right answer here would be option A. 
The term domestic content requirement can be associated with developing solar power production in India. This was instituted in the Jawaharlal Nehru National Solar Mission. See, the National Solar Mission, also known as the Jawaharlal Nehru National Solar Mission, was adopted by India in the year 2010. And a mandatory domestic content requirement was imposed on solar power developers. Therefore, the right answer here would be option A. Please remember that this is one type of non-tariff barrier. Moving on to the fact of the day for today, which is very short-range air defense missile system. What is the context? The Defense Acquisition Council has accorded acceptance of necessity to this missile system which has been designed and developed by the Defense Research and Development Organization or DRDO. First, let me give you a short background to this. The Indian Army has been using IGLA-M since the 1980s. This system today is not well suited for the evolving modern threats, right? And in the year 2018, Russia was believed to supply IGLA-S missile system to Indian Army. But this deal is still pending and under review by the Ministry of Defence to reduce arm import and promote Make in India. And DRDO here grabbed this opportunity and started working on its very own very short-range air defence or the VS Horads program. And recently, the Ministry of Defence has accorded acceptance of necessity to VS Horad IR homing missile variant. This development comes amid the ongoing military standoff with China at the line of actual control. So what exactly is this missile system? This is a man-portable air defence system or MANPAD which has been designed and developed indigenously by DRDO. This has been designed for anti-aircraft warfare and neutralizing low-altitude aerial threats at short ranges. As the name suggests, it is meant to kill low-altitude aerial threats at short ranges specifically. How does it work? This missile system incorporates many novel technologies including the miniaturized reaction control system and also integrated avionics. The missile is propelled by a dual-thrust rocket motor. The DRDO has designed the missile and its launcher in such a way that it ensures easy portability. So this is expected to fill in a critical gap in the army's inventory, especially for the eastern and northern borders. That is all for today. Thank you for being with us. Keep watching and keep learning. If you've been liking all our initiatives, do like our videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to never miss another update.